How you going guys? Welcome back to another video. On this one, I wanted to talk a little bit about the panel which I've done the grind pattern on with the Port Red Candy on. Um, and to see what kind of adhesion I got on the panel and also what kind of rust is appearing on the panel. Since I handled it without like rubber gloves on, I didn't use a like deoxidine or steel conditioner on it. Now, in most cases, whenever I do uh, bare metal, like bare metal resprays, I always steel condition the bare steel before I put it in epoxy primer. Now, if you're wondering what kind of steel conditioner or rust treatment uh, like product I use, well, I've actually got the bottle right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here is the CAMS Deoxit. So this is a metal conditioner and rust remover. I've made other videos on this product and the way that I actually use it. So I'll be sure to put a link to that video down in the description. Be sure to check it out. Because um, yeah, if you're curious about the product and you're curious about how to actually use it, well, that video will run you through the whole process and getting it in epoxy primer. So what's the moral of this video? Well, the moral of the video is to show you guys uh, basically the panel and what it looks like six months after it's been painted. So just to give you a bit of a recap of what I've actually done on this panel when I painted it. So it was a brand new panel. It had an e-coat on the panel. I used a roll lock and um, a roll lock disc over the panel and I basically made a squiggly line pattern in the bare steel all over the panel, as you can see from the footage on the screen. Now, there was a few things which I'd done on that panel which probably wouldn't be up to uh, the proper standard or procedure when doing something like that. But I wanted to do it to basically see what would happen if I cut a lot of corners. Now, the panel was pretty much just painted to show you guys the effect um, that you can get when doing um, a grind pattern and putting candy on it. Now, the original idea come from a guy on Instagram. Um, I can't think of his name now, but there'll be links down in the description for the original video that I actually done on the panel. So, in a nutshell, guys, I cut a lot of corners. I wanted to do my own version of the grind pattern and put a candy on it because I've never done it before. So, I actually put in the video that if you guys know how to do it like correctly to write it in the comments so I learn and everyone else learns. Well, no one actually wrote in the comments because a lot of people haven't actually seen this being done before. So, cutting a long story short, I basically ground down the panel. I put, I put port red candy over the top. From memory, I think I've done about six coats of candy. Then I used the DNA Paints Custom Clear on over the top. I think I put two or three coats on from memory. Um, so the moral of the video, to be quite frank, is to see what kind of surface rust I got from handling the panel without rubber gloves on and without using that steel conditioner. And six months later, I've had a really good look at it. Um, I can't see any signs of surface rust on the panel. No fingerprint outlines. There's, n I can't see anything. Now that's probably um, like in saying that that's probably due to probably the darkness of the candy, and trying to get the panel in the right light to show any signs of rust is a little bit tricky. I must admit. Now the candy is pretty dark when it's in the shade, and you can't see nothing. Like you can't see no grind pattern. The pattern almost looks black. So in order to see the effect, it must be in sunlight. So I have put it out in the sun. I have skimmed my eyes over it and I can't see any signs of rust. Now, I think um, the reason why there is no rust on the panel is because I done the, gr the grind pattern and I painted it all within maybe an hour and a half, if that. So I think there was no real time where the oil off my fingers on the bear still had a time to actually react and have that chemical reaction and actually start the process of the surface rust. Now, I wouldn't advise anyone to replicate what I've done on their own project and leave it for a couple of days and then paint it because chances are, if you haven't worn any gloves or you haven't still conditioned it, then chances are it's gonna rust. Now, so, with that said, um, yeah, the panel looks really cool. It's still got the really nice gloss. Uh, it's got the really cool grind pattern. The candy looks amazing. Um, let's talk about adhesion. 
So in most cases when painting bare steel, it is a really good idea to use an adhesion promoter or there's a big siren outside. So it's a good idea to use an adhesion promoter like Bulldog or some other kind, whatever. Um, or use one of DNA Paint's products called Key Clear. Now Key Clear is basically an adhesion promoter, but it's also like a clear coat. It's really good for, let's say you've got a really old hot rod, you want to keep that patina finish, well you would use this Key Clear over the car. You would put, like you wouldn't even scuff it down to like uh, lose that uh, patina finish. You would keep it the way it is. You would apply two coats, two dust coats of the Key Clear and then go and put two or three coats of your ordinary uh, 2K clear on over the top. So that way you've sealed down the patina finish, you've gained adhesion by using the key clear, then you've gone and put your ordinary 2K clear on over the top to really get that dead flat finish, whether you want to sand it down and polish it, whatever. So I actually got the chemist to do a adhesion test on it. I think it was about one or two weeks later after painting it. And they're, like to my surprise, um, it come back with a 100% adhesion rating. So basically, to give you a quick little rundown on one of the methods or ways that our chemist at work does adhesion tests, is there's this special adhesion tape. Like it, it, It's almost like masking tape, but it's a little bit different. It's some really strong adhesive on it. it I don't know too much about the tape, I just know that this is one method or one way of doing an adhesion test on our paints and other things. So basically, in a nutshell, um, he basically gets a steel roller, gets like a paint scriber or like a steel scribe, and he scribes, scratches lines in the panel, then lays the tape down on it. He presses on the tape really firmly, then rips it off really fast. Um, and if... And look, I don't know all the ins and outs about the ad adhesion tests. I just watched him do it. I did film it on my phone when he'd done it, but that was six months ago and I've lost the footage. So, in a nutshell, he scratches up the panel, makes all these little squares with like different lines, vertical and horizontal, then applies the tape on the top, then rips it off. And I think out of 100 squares or 50 squares, whatever it is, I haven't counted them. Uh, I think it's 100. Out of 100 squares... If up to five squares pulls off out of 100, it still passes the adhesion test. Well, on this panel, no squares actually come off. It had perfect 100% adhesion, and I was quite surprised. So that's pretty much it, guys. I don't know what else to really talk about with the panel, um, but I felt that I needed to make another video to touch base on it to show you guys that, look, providing you are... Um, like wearing rubber gloves and you are doing the grind pattern and painting it in the same day, I reckon you can get away with not steel conditioning it and using like a key clear, etc. The fact that we got perfect adhesion, there is no surface rust visible on, on the panel. Um, yeah, I mean, look, yeah, it's not the right way to do it. There are better ways out there, but the fact that it worked, we got no surface rust and we got perfect adhesion is a good indication that even if you were to not wear gloves and handle it, etc., um, you can probably get away with um, painting a project or a customer's bike, etc. Now, ideally, in the ideal world, yeah, there are better procedures that you can do, which I have explained about the key clear, uh, the uh, what the cams, like the oxidine. Yeah, there's a few different things that you can do to guarantee a perfect job, but it was a bit of a test. I wanted to experiment, do a bit of a sample, uh, revisit it six months later. I think that six months is a really good time frame to do a test like this. Um, I think if it was going to rust, it would have happened in like two or three weeks, if that. The fact that it's been almost seven months, I am pretty safe to say that, yeah, if you guys were to give it a shot and paint it within a, a couple of hours on a, a nice warm day, then yeah, I think you can get away with it. Anyway, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a, a random one. Um, but yeah, we've actually got some pretty cool content coming up. Um, I've actually got another car to do. So if you're interested in seeing another full respray and 
um, I guess all the prep work which goes into getting a car nice and straight, etc., then stick around. If you haven't subscribed, press that subscribe button. Leave me a comment, let me know if you wanna see other little tests like this get done and you don't have the products to do it or whatever, then write the idea down in the comments and I'll make a video about it. Anyway guys, you take it easy, thanks for watching this one and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Damn, damn.